And yet, I would wake up in the middle of the night and I'd have this yearning inside of me. And I foolishly... It's up and something unusual. His arms and his legs are numb. He gets diagnosed with a disease. Frankly, I've never heard. It's the Gillian uh, Barre. The pain was so bad that you had pro you had pain when you blinked your eyebrow. I actually trained myself to blink one eye at a time. Because That's of the pain. Every every blink of my eye was a gradual thing, and yet to give me some semblance of normalcy, some ability to sleep two or three hours a night, I began to take more of the medication than I should have. And, and I was trying to get up the, the, the energy to get out of the truck and inspect the field that I was trying to sell. And I saw a vial of prescription medication. I should have known. All I was consumed with was stopping the pain. As I, I took the last of the medication that evening, and I'm facing the setting sun. For some reason, I didn't plan it that way. All the sun, and I raised my hand, and I remember it shaking violently. I cried out, God, forgive me. Forgive me. I cried out from a part of me that I didn't even know existed. Not out of fear. I'd faced death a couple of times. The horrific pain that I had endured for all those years since the onslaught of the Guillain-Barre was gone. I felt more alive than I had ever felt before. And the pain was gone. I felt so great, I stood out of the truck, I walk about 15 feet away, and I'm feeling as though a heavy, wet overcoat has been taken off from me, and all the pain has gone with it. And then I look back at the truck, and there's someone in my truck. I'm absolutely enraged. The moment when I realized that the guy in the truck was me mm. was truly earth shattering. But I began to rise. I can look through the rear window of the truck and see my body slope over the wheel. I'm over the truck. I can look down in the bed of the truck, Sid, and see my toolbox. And being a, a former pilot, I'm a good judge of altitude. and. And I'm at suddenly 100 feet, 200 feet. I'm drifting slowly backwards, and I'm rising. I'm rising. And I am two golden circle appeared in the sky. And in the center filled with gold, it opened. And suddenly, it was as though I had put all the thrusters in the jet engines. I went zipping into this tunnel of light, which I'm sure many people have heard of. One, possibly. And within a, sh a very quick period of time, I, I recognized that there's a, a brilliant light at the end. The mist cleared, I looked down, and I can't believe it. I am standing on the most incredible green grass-colored field. Uh, the mist is laying over. We pilots call it ground effect. There's beautiful flowers showing through it. But then to the left of that line, Sid, it was as forward and looked down on this cold black blackness. And I saw something like a dim light at the bottom, like a light of fire, red fire. And suddenly I heard the strangest sound, like two massive iron doors opening and screeching on hinges that had not been used in a long time. And suddenly emerging from those doors was the most hideous creature you could ever imagine. Hollywood could never duplicate what I saw. So I'm looking, I can't, I see this thing coming out, and suddenly I'm assailed by this horrific smell that comes out of that pit, an odor of death and to make its way up the wall of that pit. But its body, Sid, was formed of like a rolling mass of dark cloud with a face on it. And I heard the most horrific things, something, something screaming for me. And I was terrified. I mean, I'd love to tell you I stood there and wanted to do battle. I was terrified. And it reared up out of that hit over me. And the most hideous face imaginable, massive in its size, snarled at me. And there was basically turned toward the light. And when I did, I sensed this creature, its breath in the back of my neck, the stench of its breath. And I felt a sharp claw move down the back. And I cried out, God, help me. Help me. Thank you.
but coming rapidly toward me. And I was afraid they were going to make too fast a landing, <laughs> but they did a beautiful job. They took form. They were angels. As they approached me, this beautiful light flooded over me, went beyond me and struck that creature. And when the light of the angel struck the creature, it scrambled back down in that hole like a rat running for cover. God had heard the cry of someone that had never turned to him in his life. The angels came forward and, and, I, and they spoke to me through thought transference. And as they term, Sid, when I did, I felt I had been impolite in doing that. And so I pulled my hand back. And when I did, the light of the angel's body clung to my hand till I got back about six to 10 inches. So in the holy city, I mean, these incredible buildings of light, not hewn from stone, Sid, but hewn from blocks of light that exuded the warmth and life. And when they pulled, the angel pulled mine out of his robe and opened it for Jesus to read, I was absolutely shamed and mortified that all I had to show for life lived, that I thought was the ultimate in success, was this small thin book, no bigger of everything that happened to me. Because when his eyes locked on mine and he smiled at me, he said, Jesus smiled at me. But when I looked into those eyes of gray and green and blue, a successful career, successful businesses, and yet